Recently, Kim Jong-un managed to win an online modern tournament with an upcoming deck. Kim's list is built around Urborg and Cabal Coffers, a simple but effective strategy between two lands as Urborg makes everything a swamp and Cabal Coffers makes more mana with more swamps. To utilize being mono black, we also have many utility lands that can pressure the opponent's mana and their board. As Kim loves to pump money into his army, we have over 18 removal spells in the main. This alongside our card draw and ramp strategy will keep the board clear and will help us land a card the great creator consistently on an empty board to win the game. My favorite choice from Kim is that to keep this deck degenerate, we have access to 3 Shadow of Dao in the sideboard which will see a lot of play in this video. To start the first round of our tournament, we have to mulligan to 6 but we have a great hand because we have Cabal Coffers and Urborg in our opening 6. I'm gonna bottom the extra Field of Ruin and let's see what the opponent has to do to start the game. With the opponent playing a Mishra's Bauble and a basic Mountain, I'm assuming they're playing something like Underworld Breach or even a Mono Red Prowess deck. But with the opponent having no pressure on their turn 1, I doubt they're an aggressive deck so they must be an Underworld Breach deck so let's start attacking their graveyard with Relic of Progenitus. My theory gets thrown out the window when the opponent plays a Trium and a Bauble showing that they're most likely on 4 color Money Soup. Developing our hand with Knight's Whisper, the opponent follows up with Red and Six, but because Relic of Regenitus has kept the graveyard empty, they can't do anything with it. And with the opponent having two basic lands on the table already, I'm going to spend this turn Field of Ruining the opponent, exiling the land from the graveyard, and playing another Relic of Regenitus. The opponent follows up with an expressive iteration, finds a fetch land, I can't exile the fetch land because they can just exile the expressive iteration, then they plus their Ren and Six and play another Abundant Growth. With the opponent tapped down low, we can now slam our best removal spell, Invoke Despair. This will make the opponent sacrifice a Planeswalker, Enchantment, and a Creature, and for each mode they can't, they lose two life and we draw a card. So here we're drawing one card and they have to sacrifice an Abundant Growth and a Ren and Six. After using both of our relics to exile the opponent's graveyard, the opponent follows up with an Omnath, Fetch Land, Teferi Time Raveler, and bounce their own Abundant Growth to recast it. With a land off the top, I decide to start my turn by sacrificing Relic of Progenitus to enable Revolt for my Fatal Push. This finds another land off the top of the deck. Wanting more mana and more cards, I play my other Cabal Coffers and sacrifice my other Relic, and like an absolute beast, we find a card in the Great Creator. This means now we can Fatal Push the Omnath, play our Karn, and get Sundering Titan from our sideboard. Sundering Titan is the best card against 4 color control, and that's because Urborg makes one of their lands a swamp. The opponent has 5 lands in play, they have each basic land type in play, meaning this will destroy 5 lands when it hits the table. With the opponent playing their land and just passing the turn, I can plus my Karn, float all of my mana, and cast Sundering Titan. Here I'm not afraid of a counterspell because 4 color control doesn't really play those anymore. In response to the Sundering Titan trigger, the opponent floats all their mana. This to me screams something like a solitude to remove the Sundering Titan. Now the wording of Sundering Titan says when it leaves the battlefield. So if the opponent solitudes this Sundering Titan, it will destroy all of their lands. And then because we have two mana floating, we can cast the Damnation to make sure this Karn stays around. The opponent does have an unholy heat, but I'm sure with zero lands they can't really do anything here. With two removal spells in my hand, and two field of rune, I can now make sure that the opponent indefinitely stays mana screwed. With the opponent having two non-basics, I field of rune both of them, and we eventually draw a Karn which the opponent concedes to. Going into boarding we want to bring in the three Shadow of Doubt and the two Inquisition of Kozilex, and I trim some removal spells and some engineered explosives. Game 2 starts off great because we have an average to medium hand, but it's boosted by Shadow of Dell because the opponent will be using a load of fetch lands. What's even better is for our first draw step we find a second Shadow of Dell. So here I'm just hoping the opponent has a fetch land when we have access to 2 mana. With a relic off the top, I'm not going to play it because not only did the opponent not have a Ren and 6, but we want to keep these Shadow of Doubts up. And this finally works when the opponent plays a Traverse the Elvenwald, so I'm going to snap off the Shadow of Doubt to counter that and draw a card. With another Relic of Regenitus off the top, we're just looking to consistently hit our land drops, so I play this Relic and if the opponent does not fetch a card then I'll sacrifice it to draw a card. Which is what happens, they play a basic island, so we need to keep hitting our land drops, so I'm going to keep sacrificing these Relics. We do the exact same thing again, the opponent doesn't do anything, so we just sacrifice our relic to try and keep hitting our land, which we do. 
and we get a ton of value on our end step because the opponent finally fetches. Let's counter that and draw a card. What's nice is while the opponent keeps on doing nothing, we keep getting to do things. Like for example, this Field of Ruin off the top lets me Field of Ruin the Temple Garden on their upkeep, so we have Revolt in their turn, and also thins our deck from a land. As well as, the opponent has all four basics in play now, so any more Field of Ruins is actually Stone Rain. And we do find another Field of Ruin off the top, Demolition Field, almost exactly the same as Field of Ruin, just it gives the opponent an option if they want to search. So let's Stone Rain the opponent on their upkeep, and then again have Fatal Push Up with Revolt. An ironic play, the Magus of the Moon from the four color deck hurts the mono color deck more than the four color deck. Makes a lot of sense in modern, so let's use Fatal Push because we do have Revolt from the Demolition Field we used on the upkeep. The opponent does have a Veil of Summer in response, but that's completely fine because now we can untap and slam Invoke Despair to get a lot of value. Speeding things up, we do get a Relic of Regenitus and Invoke to spare down, and the opponent finally plays an Omnath. But with multiple removal spells in hand and a Cabal Coffers off the top, I'm not concerned about killing it. After using Cabal Coffers and my Relic of Regenitus, the opponent does have a Besaidu for the Cabal Coffers to remove it from the board. And I am not joking, for the rest of this game, my opponent casts a creature or a Planeswalker. I cast a removal spell. My opponent casts another creature or a Planeswalker. I cast another removal spell. They eventually get a Dress Down, but it doesn't matter because I play Karn the Great Creator minus for Walking Blista, and I just wait for the opponent to have their shields down, and then they concede because I'm obviously going to play Walking Blista to kill them. I really like the way Kim Jong-un built this deck, because it has a ton of removal spells. Here in the second round against Team of Rhinos, I managed to have multiple Invoke Despairs to keep their board tiny, and also use one mana removal spells to constantly kill the Rhinos. This let me win both Game 1, and game two very easily, and we crushed Team of Rhinos without a problem. In game two, the opponent was mana screwed, but they never fetched so that I could screw them even more with Shadow of Doubt. But what I found funny is the opponent decided to rage in the chat that they got so unlucky about lands and spells, so I told them that this was Kim Jong-un's list, and uh, he designed it well. Overall, I really enjoyed this deck. I did struggle against Eldrazi Tron because I found that they were too quick for me to both interact with their lands, disrupt their Karn the Great Creators, and also work around all their creatures. I did manage to beat them in game 2, but with them being on the play in games 1 and 3 made it very difficult. Then in the final round, I played against Lantern Control, which while the match went on for very long, it was a very easy matchup, and that's just because I cast Karn the Great Creator and the opponent dies because all of their cards are artifacts and I can remove all their constructs from Urza's Saga, they can't kill the Karn, and then they just die. So as always, at the end of this video, if you enjoyed yourself, don't forget to like and subscribe, and here's the chest for you gambling degenerates.